I am unashamed. What about you? Welcome back to Unashamed, the Smoky Hour. The, uh, <laughs> I was wondering if anyone was going to address that Zach evidently has picked up a nasty habit, or your building may be on fire, Zach. Do you hear any sirens, alarms? So, for those of you, for those of you listening and not watching, for those you, uh, YouTubers or however you're watching, you will notice that Zach's studio, his camera, something. He he's got a kind of a old fashioned smoky haze going, and we noticed it right off, of course. And so we were trying to figure out what has caused this. <laughs> I'm gonna, I get the first guess. As a okay. now a movie mogul, Zach has decided to change the mood. <laughs> so every time it goes to Zach, we need some background old bar type music. The old forties. 40s do you, music. Do I yeah. look? Do I look jaundiced a little bit? I feel like I look a little. Uh, yeah, Zach thought he had fatty liver again uh, yeah. when he saw it's himself gray, yeah, in the monitor the room around me. It's kind of a grayish. Uh, there's a gray tone to it. I, I don't know what happened. I can't figure it out. Maddie, you got to uh, call Cole and figure out what happened. I hope you can fix this in post. Uh, but we'll, oh, I yeah. guess we'll. Yeah, we'll have to. Now that this, uh, Jay said at the beginning, this is what separates our podcast from the rest. We just <laughs> enter into the chaos. You get to see how the sausage is made. So this you just is, go uh, for it. We are breaking the fourth wall here. That's I don't exactly. know what's going on. I'm not a camera guy, but I did. I turned everything on this morning. I can turn stuff on, but I don't know past that. That's that's my. Well, it was. Back. I will say, Zach, it was nostalgic for me because it took me back to my childhood and teenage years when my grandparents smoked between the two of them, six packs a day. Uh, and that was broken down by five packs for my grandpa, and one for my grandmother. And so when you would walk into their house yeah. to play a game of dominoes, it looked just like your, your studio looks. Yeah, and you knew, like you knew they were in there cause you could hear them talking, but you couldn't yeah. see them. So you would have to like part, the part the smoke and then there they'd be now, the i remember yes. having having a moment when i was a teenager where i realized that the walls were originally painted white that's not <laughs> yellow paint <laughs> oh and the ceiling and the ceiling was yellow too yeah, uh, remember? there was some cigarette smoking going on in there. I think if you just li- if you just hung out there for a couple hours, it's, it's the equivalent of smoking a pack of cigarettes just being in there. Well, there's no doubt I'm so because you know I have all these sinus issues, and God bless our fan base out there for giving me all these home remedies. But yeah. I'm telling you now, you know what happened. I grew up in that environment. You're talking about secondhand smoke. I was a heavy smoker from yeah. ten till about you know till I left. And when but did, was when what did mall? When did mall? cash in when did she die 96 it finally got her therefore the truth is (laughs) smoke cigarette smoke or not she got 96 years out of it she did quit later on in life she did yeah when they got up to what a dollar a pack or something there was a it was a money thing they got to a certain price and she says i her and paul said i'm done well it's funny because she she smoked like her generation most of her life but she would always quit for every child, you know, when she was her years, she had seven children. Yeah. She quit during her pregnant years, and then she picked it back up, and then she quit again later in life. You're right. No, it's. When, I what, think it's proven it's bad for you. Look, we we had to pause. It. We watched a movie last night. Missy got back from Nashville, so we had movie night, and she picked this movie called The Hill. It has uh, what's that guy's name? Dennis uh, Quaid. Quaid. Dennis Quaid in it, and which. I know you're all you're already wondering, oh, is this a good movie? All parents of little league baseball should be should watch that movie because there's an underlying theme about, you know, parents trying to continue their career through their kids. Yeah. And oh, uh, yeah. so that was an underlying theme to it, but I I really appreciate that. But we had to pause the movie because Missy was like, this is a, this is too unrealistic, the first five minutes. And I was like, babe, this is my childhood. I'm watching it. <laughs> She's like, no one is spitting in a spittoon during church, spitting tobacco. I was like, oh, yeah. yeah. 
This was a thing. <laughs> this was a real deal. She's like, no one is smoking in a church building while the preacher is preaching. I said, oh, yeah. Th- this is a thing. <laughs> that's happened. That happened. Real. That's a real deal. And they uh, they had one rig with all the people in it, like the old big Chrysler. Yeah. And, and you yeah. didn't. You, it wasn't whether you had an open seat or not. You just made it work. When the problem is when we would go to church, and you had all the boys sitting next to each other, there was a tendency to you didn't like being in each other's physical space, and so a lot of fights would break out and. You know, you know, the, we we mentioned the rule many times on this podcast. Dad had a rule. If there was ever any meat popping was the way he put it, you know, any any fisticuffs that broke out, then somebody was getting a whipping. So I, there were quite a few Sundays where mostly Jason Willie, but some of us would get a whipping when we got home for fighting in the car. Oh, there was some, that, there, there was some subtle things in this movie that was so funny. <laughs> so they got like nine people crammed in a five seat vehicle and the only <laughs> space in the vehicle was a two feet space in between the grandma and the kids <laughs> they're all piled over on one side and there's a little space there because that's the last place you wanted to be close to because you'd get head thumped in a heartbeat <laughs> oh i thought it was oh, a good. really good movie i mean the theology because the the main characters of preacher theology was you know which i think representative of a lot of churches it was a little legalistic not a little it was a lot (laughs) and uh it just there there was a really a chasm in between what goes on in a building and what you're supposed to be doing outside the building but anyway that's a topic for another day but overall it was a true story and a fascinating story and i'm glad glad they told it i mean i think it's pg there's three or four cuss words in it but it it's a family oriented movie well historical irony jace the name of the bar that is um, when there were several bars featured in the blind but the name of the bar that we actually ran that mom and dad actually ran the bar. The name of it was The Hill. And when you said that, I thought, oh, they made now they've made a movie about the bar we were in, but they went a different no. I'm assuming that's the pitching mound, right? The Hill. Well, it was a, uh, what do you call it, movie mogul, when the last name of the family was Hill. Oh, okay. And the son was a baseball player where there is a heel. He actually wasn't a pitcher, but double double entendre. Double entendre. That's what I was looking for. Well, that's what the blind was. It was a double entendre. It was. What does that mean? And I'm like, well, the duck blind. There we go. Rim shot. All right. Since you got you. I'm glad. I'm glad I could bring you guys back down memory lane. (laughs) Oh, it's funny, Zach. I think. Yeah. Memories. (laughs) It's good. I think. I think I'm going to get Zach a smoking jacket for his birthday. Well, they always say it's hard to be funny, but Zach has a way of just showing up and laughter ensues. (laughs) (laughs) Well, what's comical about it is I'm down here at the Southern Lair, totally on my own, basically producing my side of things. Zach, who is the mogul of our entire production empire, and it is just one series of mishaps after another. <laughs> what Jason true. said the other day, he uh, said something about, uh, he says, uh, me, I'm notorious late. What was it? Uh, you, you got on to me, be notorious late. Uh, I'm notoriously late for everything. Yeah, yeah you it's are. Because I, it's, yeah, it's, I feel like I'm like a chicken with my, I'm running around like a chicken with my head cut off. And what Phil says, I'm, I'm beating aimlessly against the wind. So, well, so uh, 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 Jay, since you got the buttons there. Um, got the buttons. I need some breaking news music. Oh, this is the hardest one to pull off because you have to push. You got to double twice. tap it. There we go. Breaking news. So I, I teased. It's funny because Unashamed Nation, you guys, you listen carefully. So I, the last time Jersey Joe's name came up, I made one little comment about there being. I think I said family drama was the line. I, I just said, yeah, we got some family stuff going on. That's what I said. And then I didn't say anything else about it. I said something like, I have to tell you later. But a couple of listeners uh, sent me notes that said, does this have anything to do with your granddaughter dating Jersey Joe's son? And I was like, 
you people are on top of what we're talking about. Because that was a, <laughs> there you go. You get the applause. So, Dad, we now officially have the merging of the Robertson Stone family with the Conjimis, Jersey Joe, all the way from New Jersey. Uh, their son, their youngest son, has been dating my oldest granddaughter. And uh, so he popped the question Friday night. And what's funny is we were in Harlan, Iowa. Lisa and I were speaking up there for a fresh road media at a, the Higher Ground Conference. And so we're in the audience and someone's up on stage. And I knew he was going to ask her, but, you know, we're all caught up in the now we're ready to speak mode. And so I just didn't think about it anymore. I looked down and Anna is FaceTiming me. And I knew what that meant. I meant that she was fixing to come home from the big proposal. So Lisa and I went in another room. And, of course, she comes in. Everybody's excited. Joe and Christine are there, and they're filming everything. And, Jace, you'll appreciate this. So they're showing me who all's in the room. And, you know, I'm expecting just my immediate little family there. And there's Reed, who's sitting there. <laughs> and I was like, oh, Reed, I didn't know you you were coming over for the big reveal, you know. And he said, hey, I just happened to come over for dinner. And so he just happened to be sitting at the table when all this is going down. She comes in, tells us about it, because we all knew because we knew he had asked Jay in the deer stand. And then Jay said yes. And then he shot a deer, a buck that walked out that they've been looking for. So I assume that was the almighty given the blessing uh, because of the deer kill uh, when he asked. And then uh, so then but I got a little verklempt. I'll admit it. I've uh, been praying for my oldest granddaughter for her whole life about the man she was going to spend her life with. And so it was kind of neat for me. And then I had prayer uh, for them and their marriage. And so then we went out and spoke to this group in Iowa and I told them about it. And it was funny because Lisa said how old they were. And so they all clapped. But I looked at their faces and several of them were like, so in Louisiana, I guess getting married at 18 is a good thing, <laughs> you know, because they had a look like I'm not so sure about that. So I, I could tell. I said, well, you know, we're, I, uh, there's at least four generations of teenage brides in my chain. And dad, it started with you and mom, teenagers. Then Lisa and I, we were teenagers. And then my daughter, Anna, she was only 18 when she married Jay, who is 10 years older than her. And now Carly. But I told him, I was like, look, I know what the statistics say in America about teenagers and a lot of divorce. But in our family, mom and dad have been together for over 60 years. Lisa and I, 40. Jay and Anna, 20. And so now Carly's getting married. So for whatever reason, it seems to work for us that we kind of grow up together uh, as long as we have the right community around each other. So anyway, that's my breaking news. We now have a new dad. You now have your great granddaughter is getting married, which means you may have great, great grandchildren. How does that make life. you feel, Phil? How does that make you feel? No feeling yet. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how it works. <laughs> you know, you get reports, boy, they're doing great, or, whoa, you need to talk to your grandchildren. You know, like, uh, Back room meetings, you know. Sit down there. Let's I call them come to Jesus meeting. <laughs> That's having but, a wait and see approach. Right. See, now I figured out Al. Yeah, why I, don't want, I don't want to embrace anything just on the face of it. I'm saying, yeah, we'll see. Now I figured out why Jersey Joe thought we needed to work on our relationship because this was his first year of duck hunting. Exactly. And I have been nominated the captain of the duck blind to tell people <laughs> when they do things wrong or what we need to work on. And so it, it was bumpy because when you're a new duck hunter, it's just hard to understand how things work. Yeah. But I, I will say Jay does a very good job of that with some of the in-laws that have, have been married into our family. And uh, cause he, he really made a big deal about, a couple of them bringing their cell phones to the duck blind. And so while we're waiting for the ducks, they're over there on their, their phones. And so a little birdie told me he had a meeting with the young youths who had married some of your granddaughters and said, hey, find some way to do something to be a part of the team. And you leave that cell phone at the lair when you come out. And I thought that was really good guidance and instruction. No, I think that's pretty good. That's, uh, let's take our first break. So 
uh, one of our sponsors is a company called NetSuite, uh, and they're owned by Oracle, which, as you've mentioned, Oracle before. Yeah, as a, a huge company. As a solo investor who does my own stocks, full disclosure, I own some of Oracle's shares, which I didn't even know that NetSuite was under their because they own a lot of different companies. All oh, right, most of these big companies do, but I was just giving you full disclosure. Now you can. I'm interested to know exactly what they do. Al. NetSuite is amazing because what they do is they take everything in your business and kind of bring it under one roof. Because that's what happens with small business. You're trying to take care of your inventory, your HR, your financial management, and they help you get it under one uh, heading. And one of the things, the way they describe it is like this. They said there's three numbers you need to know. First one is 37,000. That's the number of businesses which have upgraded to NetSuite by Oracle. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system. It streamlines your accounting. It helps you with your financial management, inventory, HR, as I said. 25, that's how long they've been doing it, 25 years. They've been helping businesses do more with less, you close your books in days, not weeks, and you drive down your costs. And let's face it, that's what makes business successful. And one is the other number because your business is one of a kind. So you get a customized solution for all of your key performance indicators, which are called KPIs, in one efficient system with one source of truth. And that's what I meant by being under one roof. This is all one thing together. So you're going to manage your risk. You get reliable forecast. You improve your margins. Everything you need to grow, and it's all in one place. So here's what you do. Download NetSuite's popular KPI checklist designed to give you consistent, excellent performance absolutely free at netsuite.com slash fill. That's netsuite.com slash fill. Get your own KPI checklist. Check them out, netsuite.com slash fill. Zach, since we're doing breaking news, um, can can you talk about what your kids have been involved with? Can you talk about that yet? Uh, I can, yeah. So Max and Layla. Could, and let me just let me update. So a while back, and I don't know how many podcasts ago it was, Zach had a mystery trip to L.A. And all of a sudden, all we heard was Zach won't be on the podcast this week because he's going to be in L.A. So we assumed we didn't know what he was doing, but we knew he was up to something. And then later we found out what it was, but we couldn't talk about it. So now, Zach. I'm not sure how it even, uh, yeah, not even sure how it happened, except that, um, because neither one of them have a really big social media following or anything. But, uh, but Max does play uh, down at the, this place in town called The Collective. And there's another restaurant in Black Mountain um, that he plays at a lot, Um, plays music. So I, and our town's a big tourist town. So I think people come through and, um, People have always said, man, you need to try out for American Idol. And um, he's like, I'm you know, probably ne- never going to do that. But um, they reached out to him and Layla both. And so they auditioned for American Idol. And uh, well, I can't tell you anything past that, but but they will be on the show. I think I can say that. Okay. So season starts. I should know this. I think February something. Google it. <laughs> you figure it out. The season starts soon, and the, uh, Max and Layla both are going to be on there. And so, yeah, we we've, uh, we've yeah we can't kinda, tell anything else. But can't you can't tell anything yet. I don't you know. know anything else. This is breaking news <laughs> to me. <laughs> so, well, Zach, Zach, yeah, this is breaking news to breaking news. <laughs> Zach, Zach has definitely kept it close to the best, and so you know, which is smart. That's yeah. what you got to. So what well, they've done, you know, Max and Layla both have done music. Layla sings with uh, Sadie's group called um, Ello worship. And she's the lead female vocalist on, on that, that they do a lot of worship songs. And, um, and then Max and her both did the thing. I think we talked about a few weeks ago with Shane and with, Shane, with Shane and Shane. So they cut, um, they cut an album with them with a, a host of other young people as well. So, I mean, they've been in the kind of the Christian music industry or uh, industry, mu- Christian music um, genre, but they also do like a lot of kind of country folk um, indie type stuff, too. So we'll see what happens. I mean, it's uh, I think, uh, you know, they're it's a fun experience, but, you know, well, we'll and see. they're your kids. I, I realize you have to maintain a certain decorum of humility, but I'll say from my perspective, 
they are super talented. And when you, when you hear them get together with uh, Melissa's daughter and then Mia a lot of times, and when they do worship stuff, it's amazing. I mean, we, we have some super gifted vocal kids. It, it is wild to think about all of our kids and grandkids can sing so well and, and, and are musical. I guess some are, I guess Jace, your wife's musical, but we never did. We didn't sit around. I don't remember sitting around with you guys as cousins singing yeah. songs. I don't have any memories of that. Do you? No, just, I mean, within my family, you know, Missy is very musical. So a lot of our greatest memories are us as a family singing and me just tapping the floor. I'm, I but like all them. of your kids can sing too. Well, all, all three of them. They, they can sing, all three of them. One of, the, one of the positive things that came out of it was the recipes of uh, Jersey Joe and his son Yep. Through them, we were introduced to Italian food, and it's been pretty interesting, uh, all the way down to a good way to fix ducks Italian style. So the Italian recipes came with the young man that's fixing to marry a granddaughter. Yep. So it's uh. It's and look, we're gonna we're gonna now we can uh, we can feature Jersey Joe in some of our cooking stuff. We're doing these cooking right. uh, segments, yeah. which we're super excited about. So he's well, officially part of the family now. So we can well, he doesn't feature. give out his recipes. So are you gonna have some kind he's of gonna intervention on that? Yeah. He's gonna like have a, to. Well, you secrets. guys could do like a Cajun Italian fusion. You know, there's a big it's fusion. Of, have you seen the? Uh, you guys had the the uh, we do the jambalaya, which is rice based recipe, but there's um, now it's the pasta laya, which is similar um, recipe, except instead of rice, rice, you use pasta. I don't know if you guys have had that yet, but it's a cage. It's a Cajun uh, Italian fusion. There's a lot of Italians in South Louisiana too. Well, uh, one of the ones we may want to feature um, when we do our thing with Joe, Dad, is he does a um, he does a uh, duck, duck meatball. Yep. Uh, that's delicious. He also does a duck meat loaf, and these are Italian style. Of course, he calls them, you know, gravy uh, as well. So, which I think is pretty good. So, so let me go ahead and mention what we're doing because I think we mentioned once earlier. Uh, we've got this new show that's replacing our overtime content uh, with Blaze TV because we had the OTs before. So we're switching over. Starts February twelfth. It's called Cooking with the Robertsons. And um, now we can even pull the congemies into that. Uh, the episodes will be released every second and fourth Monday of the month, uh, which would be exciting. And you go to the same place you used to go for overtime, blazetv.com slash Robertson is where you sign up, you subscribe, and you're going to get these cooking episodes that we're doing. And uh, we've already done a couple. They turned out great. Um, I really think this is going to be fun for everybody. And right now, Blaze has given $30 off your subscription if you go sign up. Use the promo code Robertson30. Uh, and so you get all the things that Blaze has to offer, but you're also going to get uh, a year's worth of cooking with the Robertson. So yeah, uh, a lot of fun with, stuff. Uh, we started with uh, the uh, duck recipes and uh, Louisiana style. So now we've made way for our Jersey Joe to kind of – add to that but but uh it's gonna be hard to beat the, the gumbo we just made we it made was a good one from, from mallard ducks but it was outstanding That's so right. that, was that the first cook you did was the was a, a duck gumbo yeah we a did duck a duck gumbo, gumbo uh yep. with with dad's I just duck gumbo. oversaw it you know made sure that things were our roux got got to be the right texture and all that so it turned out great i mean it was very good and what's fun about it, Zach, is you get to all the characters and people we talk about on the podcast and they've been on here yeah. are part of it because uh, Burley uh, makes an appearance because he's dad's uh, wingman for the uh, duck gumbo. Yeah, I and taught him a, how to make them. And now right. he was there kind of monitoring the situation, thing, but it turned out wonderful. Yeah. So it's lot, it's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, that, I, this may be the most valuable offering that we've had that we're going to give you guys the the keys to some of our best recipes which by the way i i would say if you listen to the show we talk you know we talk about food a lot so 
if there's something you want to see us cook, and by us, I mean Phil, Jason, Al, I might jump in there and do a, a jambalaya. I think I you should, I, Zach. Zach yeah, is did, uh, Zach took over the uh, one of the – dad makes a jambalaya, and then my Uncle Jim, uh, Gimber, used to make a really good one, and Zach has been doing his recipe, I think, is where you got it. But he can yeah. – Zach can make one that can feed, you know, 100 people. I mean, it's a big – it's a big dish. He can do them big or do them little. So, yeah, I think it's going to be some cool stuff. Jace is a good cook as well, Jace and Missy. So we're going to have some fun. But let um, us know what you want us to cook. I I, I know one that I, I'm requesting next time I'm in town is is the uh, Opelousa catfish. Ooh, we got to do I that. I would like to get in on. Question on is, who's going to catch them? Somebody has to catch I'll do the catfish. The redneck the red oh, up the road. I'll do it because we can, we can film that aspect of it. That would be catch. fun. Yeah, what what no. month is it right now? Oh, it's coming up. River's yeah. on yeah, the coming. rise right now. Yeah. It's up 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 a little over thirty feet. Well, it's and, dangerous. Uh, Twenty one right two is the uh, is the uh, pool stage, and it's <laughs> coming feel up. Feel the river stage. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be a test later. Yeah. The shame. <laughs> so the rivers, <laughs> our rivers rise, which is good for catching catfish. Some people don't pay attention when the rivers rise. <laughs> <laughs> but we are a family group that pays careful attention to what you do. Dad, yeah. Dad, the line you always use to people, you would say, they say, well, Phil, do you live on the river? And Dad would always say, yeah, we live on the river, and sometimes we live in the river. That's it. <laughs> exactly. and you better be That's ready it. for it. That's all I know. Woo. So, Jace, our uh, friends at uh, Policy Genius. Uh, tell us how to be able to get the best life insurance quotes. Uh, what do you think about that? Well, I have a long history of not having life insurance, and it was because for years I had no money. Therefore, <laughs> if I died, I could leave you nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but once I got some money, I thought, okay, now I think we can get some life insurance. Yeah. Well, that helps <laughs> and to, to be able to get it for sure, uh, but and also to be able to leave to somebody else because, you know, you want to try to take care of the folks that you love, um, and you do that, of course, by life insurance. So Policy Genius's technology make it easy to compare life insurance quotes from all the top insurers. So they have just a few clicks to get the lowest price, and so it's going to save you a lot of time to go with these guys. And if you already have a life insurance policy through work, it may not be enough protection uh, for the needs of your family. With Policy Genius, you can find the life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million worth of coverage. So very affordable. Some options offer the same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius has licensed award winning agents who are ready to help you find the best plan that fits your needs. No wonder they have thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot. Save time and money and give your family a financial safety net with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash Phil or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash Phil. Which is why you got the land so cheap. Always remember, if land is really cheap, there's a reason. Because yep. about once every four or five years, there's no land. All water. <laughs> <laughs> the problem that mom and dad had was back in the mid-70s, the land was cheap. But to borrow money back then, you think our interest rates are bad now. You know, but people that lived through the '70s re realize it could be a lot worse. I think mom and dad's interest rate was about twenty percent uh, on that property they bought. So there's no telling how much dad you ultimately paid for that property over over time. Yep, yep. probably a lot more. But it's it's you're still there and it's still producing fish, and so that's a blessing. So Jace, we're going to commission you for that episode. Yeah, I have a Catch certain set fish. of skills. Several hundred <laughs> ducks. I won't go into exact details, but but it was all legal. Uh, were made by us chasing ducks. In other words, a lot of meals came out of that. We were eating the ducks as we were yep. harvesting them, and uh, but it ended up pretty good duck season. Yep. 
Well, and then we've talked about before we may have to do the episode with the duck fries. We've figured out how to fry duck, and it's very delicious. Yep. It's the uh, only it, duck season we've ever had to where all of the territory that we have, the duck blinds, some a percentage of it didn't even have any water the entire duck season. So we've never faced that before. But as it turned out, now the the water comes. As soon as the water started to rise, ice came with it. Everything started locking up all the way down to 11 degrees. And it really helped us because we're waiting on the ducks to migrate. And they were slow in migrating because it was so dry. But So, so Dad, I got a question for you about that. I just read a report uh, two days ago that had said that Louisiana crawfish were going to be extremely down this year, that they're expecting right. a terrible year. Is that because of the same phenomenon? Did it affect crawfish as well? Yeah, yeah. It has a powerful impact on it. This this place was, uh, it was an unprecedented, uh, what do you call them? A drought. 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 Yeah. We had a drought all the whole winter. So we were most fortunate to still do pretty good with the duck hunt. And uh, we we survived, but the drought's over. The drought's over. So what was the what was the deal about the fried duck fingers? You said out. We just kind of skipped over that. You dripped it in there, but well, it's a uh, yeah. You know, you're always looking for new ways to do duck because we were doing it so long. A couple of years ago, we sort of had a happy accident where Jep uh, forgot to bring some meat, and they had some wood ducks out, and yeah. I think it was Stone who just came up with the idea that. What if we just stripped these wood ducks and then fried them? And then he came out with a whole brine and everything else. But they are delicious. I mean, it's a really good way to eat duck. And I don't remember, Dad, all the years us growing up, us ever eating fried duck. But no. man, it's turned it's turned into quite the uh, quite the dish. So it's we may a, have to include it, that. It's as a well. great way to cook ducks. Just strip them, soak them in. Uh, Buttermilk, I think. Buttermilk. Well, you got to subscribe to get all the details. That's <laughs> right. That, that's, <laughs> what, how do they subscribe, Zach? Tell, tell them how to subscribe. Uh, yeah, it's blazetv.com slash Robertson. Blazetv.com slash Robertson. You guys get, what is it? Is it? You said 30 bucks off? Yeah, 30 bucks off a sub, which is a great oh, yeah. time to do it. So and I'll do the, what we call the running with the ops. Only about 25 people know what that means. But every They're year, running with in, the, uh, but they'll find in, out in April that's and right. May, there's an event that happens that's called running with the ops. So think I, running with the bulls, but running with the ops. I like it. Ops is short for Opelousas catfish. Opelousas catfish. That's right. clue. Big yellows, flatheads. There's a lot of different names. All right. So we ready to get back to the book of Luke? Let's do it. So in the last podcast, we read... Uh, this section, which is the actual crucifixion. And Jace mentioned um, kind of in the lead up to that, and he he's so right that, you know, we don't actually just read what happened a lot. I mean, we tend to talk about the implications about his crucifixion and what it means to us. And, of course, when you go over and read the epistles, which is all the letters that were written to the churches, you know, Paul, who's the main writer, and Peter, they do a lot of description about what the crucifixion meant. But when you just actually read what happened, which is what they did on the last podcast, it's a brutal, um, I don't know, just a, it's a, I guess you call it bittersweet because it's terrible. And yet, you know, it had to happen. So I, it's kind of a weird read. And, and so when I was reading it, Jace, getting ready for our podcast, you, ra- you really, need to read the other gospels version as you're reading it. So I was just popping around and reading all four together. So you can kind of get the whole picture of exactly what happened. Cause look, this, it was just a few hours is how long this lasted, but there's a lot of significance that comes out of the moments of what happens. And it, I guess it starts where we picked up in our reading in Luke 23, 26, where he's going toward, you know, back in the day, what they did was you had to carry your own cross and the idea was, is that, you know, this was part of the shame walk of you, you know, being executed. And in this case, there's a man there and then he carries Jesus cross and Jesus walks along behind him. And of course, when you see a, 
like the passion depicted, it was like Jesus couldn't carry it because he was so badly beaten. And that may have been the case. I don't know. But well, anyway, he, what, he shares what, that. What needs to be remembered, the, the last latter part of Luke, down to the last page, Jesus said to them, this is post-resurrection. This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled. Now, just think about this. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms, which we've gone back and forth, back and forth to back and forth. Then he opened their minds because they were a hard time catching it. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, and this is what's written for anybody who ever comes along after that, after the post-resurrection, stayed 40 days and adios. He told them, this is what is written, and this is what you got to come to a, get a grip on. The Christ must suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance, the good news coming out of it, and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, which it has been proven to be true, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I'm going to send you what my father has promised. He's talking about the Spirit, not God's Holy Spirit. But stay in the city until you've been clothed with power from on high. So that right there is brought, all of it is brought together in about this much time just much territory and that's what we've been putting forth that right there is where where it where it ends and it's still going on to this day so i guess it's true you never really leave your uh, your raisin we were out doing uh, some little segments out at mom and dad's the other day and someone noticed on the refrigerator there was a sticky note uh, that mom had put up that said the dishwasher is broken and so there wasn't any talk about fixing it. It was just the idea that I guess don't put any dishes in there. Can you, I mean, that's kind of a raisin. Can you relate to that, Jay? Well, in our world, Al, if I can't fix it by banging on it with a hammer <laughs> or just <laughs> jostling it back and forth, I need some help. I get, well, I see the reason for a sticky note. Yeah. So, so the answer we have found uh, above sticky notes and hammers is a, a group called American Home Shield, uh, because we all know there are things that are going to happen to, you know, different things in our home, maybe your your HVAC or some other situation. And that's where they come in. AHS can protect what you don't expect. You got that leaky faucet. You got that faulty water heater, uh, an appliance, whatever it is. Uh, they've got a plan that works for you. Uh, and your budget, and it's simple. When a covered item in your home breaks, contact American Home Shield, and their trusted and qualified pros will fix or replace it based on the coverage limits in your agreement. See ahs.com slash contracts for coverage details, including limit amounts, fees, limitations, and exclusions. Right now, our listeners can take $50 off, so you're already saving money, Go to ahs.com slash fill to save that 50 bucks. That's ahs.com slash fill for $50 off any plan. American Home Shield, protect what you don't expect. See ahs.com slash contracts for coverage details, including limit amounts, fees, limitations, and exclusions. And Dad, you bring up a great point because Luke's perspective is a little broader than some of the other gospel writers. That's, that's right. And he, he gives us that picture. And so the last thing we did, Jason, when we left off was Luke is the only one that mentions this uh, sort of another mention of what was going to happen in Jerusalem by addressing the women who were coming along behind him. He, he still, Luke still stays very focused on what's going to happen in terms of the gospel message and what this means, yeah. what this, all this, what does all this mean? And so we mentioned that last time as well. Yeah, there, I, there's another thing, too, that Jace brought up that I think as we kind of move into this section of Scripture, the, um, it's a good time to to kind of set, a, 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 I think, a really good groundwork for how we interpret the Gospels. 
uh, Jace brought up, well, you actually think you brought it up about the um, when the mention of, of the destruction of Jerusalem here, right? Which uh, Jace then asked the question, like, hold on, why do we get? How do we get there? And then he went. I mean, it's really good. You got to go back and listen to the last episode at the end if you if you didn't catch this. Um, I went to Hosea ten and ended up in Romans nine twenty five and twenty six, I believe. But it was really uh, interpreting a lot of what has happening here through the through that lens of the Old Testament. And I think there's a lot here that's coming up too with the, the tearing of the of the temple uh, um, curtain and things that a, a lot of what you're seeing here. If you disregard kind of all of Israel's prophetic um, direction towards a, a, a Messiah for Israel, you're going to miss this. And, you know, uh, I was just reading this morning with N.T. Wright was talking about one of the ways we misread the Gospels is we interpret it simply as Jesus is the Christian Messiah. He said, no, Jesus is the Messiah of Israel. It, 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 he is the Messiah of the Old Testament. He is the one that, that the Old Testament pointed to. This is... This is some what, what is happening here is is that inauguration uh, and and the consummation of his kingdom. That's that's the life and the death of Jesus is what's what's being brought forth here. So I think that I just want to mention that because I thought that was really interesting when Jace brought that up about um, Hosea ten verse eight and that that's what he was referencing. Yeah, you know, you're, you're going to see a lot of that in this in the next uh, rest of the story here. In the same language. Luke uses the same language about the women and what's going to happen to them that he used in Luke 21, which back when we were studying that, it shows you this idea about Jerusalem being destructed and that being the sort of official end of this era of everything that's happened. But make no doubt about it. It was all fulfilled, as Dad just read, in Christ when he died, was buried and resurrected. It's mentioned mentioned, uh, what happened to the Apostle Paul. Now, what are you waiting for? Get up, be baptized, and wash your sins away, calling on his name. That particular statement is duplicated 10 times in the book of Acts, 10 different times, beginning with the people that Peter preached to. If you just carried it on forward, it's the same story. Jesus died, was buried, and raised from the dead. It just keeps going back to it. One conversion story after another. 10 times? Same thing. Hear, believe, repent, be baptized. What's interesting, I was telling Missy, uh, you know, about this passage we're in, in Luke 23, because she said, how the podcast go? And I basically quoted it from memory where we left off about when Jesus, you know, he he's has the cross. I mean, he's he's just, you know, Simon is carrying the cross. He's He's going down. Yeah. the road to be crucified and he stops, which is an awkward place to stop mm-hmm. and see these wo- women mourning. And Missy interrupted me and she said, wait a minute, where's that at? And she had never even noticed it. I said, well, I yeah. didn't notice it till I was studying Luke. It's the only time it's mentioned in the gospels. Yeah, And I read it and kind of went through the Hosea thing because he quotes Hosea 10 Eight in verse, what is that? Thirty. And Jesus had to yeah, live verse out thirty did. the entire thing, one after yeah. the other, after the other, after the other. But what's, what the, I, to, what's to fill? Let me read that real quick, Jace. It's verse thirty that says, "Then they will begin to say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us.'" So it's yeah. a judgment. It's a judgment picture of suffering uh, that's going to take place. And we know this because historically we watched it happen. And so that's the whole idea. There, it's this judgment of rejecting Christ. So it's it's a powerful scene. And you're right, Jay, it's the timing of it, of him having this conversation and Luke including it because it fits this whole narrative that we've been pointing to about the temple and the renewal and all of it's going to happen in Jesus himself. And and really, once we get into this, which is what I want to talk about on the rest of today and next podcast, every statement that Jesus makes, uh, both going to the cross and on the cross, almost everyone is tied into some sort of prophecy yep. that's pointing to that moment. It may not be in Luke, but it's in one of the other gospels. So all of them play a role in what dad read, this idea that it that it all is in him. 
and that yep. everything is concluded and fulfilled in who no he is. No one gets we out of here alive unless they go through Jesus. Yeah, that's right. We don't we don't need another we don't need another prophet. Let's take our last break. Well, I think that's one thing we, we kind of missed to Zach's point. Because we generally just say, well, Jesus died for our sins, and, and he did. And we camp out there. But when you read all the four gospel accounts, we've gone through all four gospels. I mean, Luke was the last one we've gone through. But you actually see that there was a lot more going on when you actually read the accounts, the story as it's right. told. I mean, you always have this sense of, when, when God does his best, which is humbling himself in Jesus on a cross, well, wh- what does the evil side of things do? Well, they rise up to, d- to give their very worst because, yep. you know, we're not too far removed from Satan using Judas to betray him. And, you know, you get into those passages and. 1 Corinthians 2, that, you know, none of the rulers understood what was going on, because if, if they would have. And so, so you know, he disarmed the evil world themselves in this act, and you can see that in John 12, and, you know, he, he brings that up. It's brought up in the Corinthian letter that also that if, if, the, if the people had known, if Satan had known exactly how this was going to play out, he wouldn't have had him. Con- uh, well, exactly. Crucified. And I, it's not just that. It's this idea of the new kingdom that Jesus is bringing in, and you really see it in the you know what we've read in Luke, that by him doing this, you know, and to, to feed off of what I mean, John— Satan, Satan was got slicked in the deal. <laughs> yeah, to feed off what John said, it, it's— you have the image of God, which is obviously has to do with this new temple mm-hmm. being brought about. And I think you see that's why he brought this up here, which is what Missy and I's conversation revolved around. Because what's funny is I went through and read the Hebrews 10, the whole chapter, you know, to Missy last night. And I said, well, the reason that was so significant, and I brought up the Romans 9, 24 and 25, and I'll read it again, uh, 25 and 26, where he quotes Hosea saying that he will call them my people who are not my people, and I will call her my loved one who is not my loved one. It will happen that in the very place where it was said to them, you are not my people, they will be called sons of the living God. I mean, this is the creator of the universe reclaiming his people and when you look at john's perspective you you get an idea of this this new genesis this new exodus you know which is why he chose to have the meal with the passover of those things coming together by jesus dying and being buried and being raised well during that course of that study the point i want to make is i i said the same thing phil just said that this was according to the scriptures and i brought up first corinthians 15, you know, one through four, which is probably the most quoted passage in the letters, because he, he, Paul reminds the Corinthians of the gospel that Jesus died and was buried and resurrected. And then you have all these, these proofs of hundreds of people seeing the resurrected Lord. But one little phrase in first Corinthians 15 that said three different times that says Jesus died according to the scriptures. Well, what scriptures? And my answer to Missy and my answer today is all of them. They were all, the Old Testament was pointing to this event. Yep. And when I looked in my little margin beside my Bible, it had, when it said, according to the scriptures, it had Hosea 6. And I was like, Hosea 6, I quoted chapter 1 and verse 21, chapter 2, we went through 10. So then I went and read Hosea 6, and I think you'll find this interesting, 1 through Well, I'll just read the first three or four verses. He said, come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces, but he will heal us. He has injured us, but he will bind up our wounds. After two days, he will revive us. And on the third day, 
he will restore us, that we may live in his presence. Well, what do you think Hosea is pointing toward? After three days, he's going to restore us so that we may live in his presence? I think he's looking to Jesus and what happened on the cross you and in the empty, empty tomb. God so, has revealed it to us by his spirit. No eye thing. Look at that. None of the rulers of this age understood it. For if they had, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. Though, however, as it's written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed it to us by his spirit. Exactly. And the spirit would be poured out, which is another thing that happened. So in our immediate text on why Jesus would make this curious dialogue in, in amongst him, you know, being led to the cross, Simon carrying it. And he says, daughters, you know, don't weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. And I think there's an underlying point here of saying this is fixed to be the greatest thing that's ever happened. Yeah. Don't, don't weep for me we as speak I'm of going. We God's secret wisdom, a wisdom that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood it. None. For if they had, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord. Yeah. The Lord. So I do think he was subtly saying that to your point. But then he also predicts this, what's going to happen in A.D. 70 by saying, blessed are the barren women, the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nurse. Then they will say to the mountains, fall on us and to the hills, cover us. For if men do these things when the tree is green, speaking of what he's fixed to do, and what they're doing to him. And it's not going to be tied well, to, 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 to what men do in this new thing. This whole thing is coming down, and we're starting all over again. Well, the yeah, the temple the temple that was going to happen. So yeah. I, I think the severity of it, and, and I looked up a few things just to, you know, because we didn't, I mean, that was 2,000 years ago, roughly. When, when this happened, the destruction of Jerusalem. But if you read Josephus' account, which he says there was over a million deaths, almost 100,000 enslaved, there were multiple mass suicides because a lot of the Jewish people, the lot, a lot of the Jewish people feared life more than death mm -hmm. since they had been captured. And now, those numbers are disputed by other historians, but I mean, it's anywhere from half a million to a million. It's and, a lot of people. And, and what I found fascinating is still to this day, to this day, you can go pay 34 euros to see it in Rome. There's the Arch of Titus, and it stands today, and it it's a picture of the Romans carrying out the showbread, the menorah, or the lamp, and the Torah of, of Roman soldiers carrying that out. And it's still, it's still erected today, symbolizing their takeover of Jerusalem in AD 70. I found that fascinating. Yeah. I'm like, why would you still have that up still <laughs> as a positive yeah. thing, you know? I, I, I want to tie try to tie a bow or tie this up a little bit, not a bow on it, but to tie this up because what Phil keeps mentioning this about the mystery and it being hidden, you're, you've talked about the prophecy in Hosea. You've also related it to Romans 9, which you know, most of the time, if we talk about Romans 9, 10, 11, nobody's talking about, well, what I think it's really about, most people are, to, are going to talk about what? Election, and you're going to get into a big debate on predestination between the Calvinists and the Arminians, and, and that's like, and that's the point of the text. I don't think that's at, actually the ultimate point of the text. The ultimate point of the text is the inclusion of the Gentiles into uh, God's, uh, becoming God, God, God's part of God's uh, covenant promise. And, um, and so when you read the mystery of what, Phil was already talking about that th this is defined for us by Paul in Ephesians chapter three, when he says this, he says, uh, this is Ephesians three, uh, four, five, and six. When you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was made known to the sons of men and other generations as it is. I'm sorry. It was not made known to the sons of men and other generations, even though it was written about in the old Testament, 
as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, to Phil's point earlier, or actually the Bible's point, that the Spirit reveals these things. Verse 6, the mystery is, he's going to tell us what it is right here. Here's the mystery that's being revealed, that Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise of Christ through the gospel. You say, man, what is that? Wait, what? Why would Jesus bring up this whole collapse of of what, of what was going on in, in um, Israel in AD seventy? Why Why would he bring this up in the midst of this? Because he's bringing a bigger eschatological point that if you are a Gentile, God is opening up salvation to the entire world. He is going to establish and build a multi ethnic kingdom, which includes Gentiles who are now fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel, which is actually occurring right here. This is It's through this story that Gentiles are included in. That's the point of Romans 9. That's yeah. the point of, of Isaiah's of prophecies, Hosea's pro- Ezekiel. Like Everything is pointing to to this moment, that was the plan from the beginning that all the nations would come uphill, Jews and Gentiles. That's why Paul says in Galatians, in Christ, there's neither male nor female, Greek nor Jew. That's why Paul says that the gospel, it's the, I'm unashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of salvation for all who believe, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. It's, it, it is Jew and Gentile. Everybody is coming in to God's kingdom now, or at least had the opportunity to come in. Uh, to God's kingdom through Jesus Christ. So I, I don't know if that mm-hmm. ties it up at all, but no, it does. Whether you're in a smoky room here in <laughs> North Carolina, hopefully Maddie's fixed here, that by now. It's no, for you and me. That. I mean, the point is, it's for you and me. It's for all. God, yeah, yeah, uh, saved all right, us all. We're at it. We're at it. Time. We'll uh, we'll pick this up on the next Unashamed podcast. We'll see you there. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube and be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.